Hey everybody, welcome to Creative Bug. We're coming at you live like we always do on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and I'm so excited because we have Carolyn Gavin in the studio. <laughs> Hi, Carolyn. Hello. Thank you for being here all week. It's been amazing watching you paint. Oh. Um, Carolyn's doing a 30-day challenge with us, and t tell us, like, what are you painting in the 30-day challenge? Oh, I've painted bugs and birds and flowers and girls. So many and women flowers. And <laughs> bicycles, pods. Yeah. What else have we done? Um, Bowls of fruit. Trees, lots of fruit, vegetables, carrots. Kind of like yeah. all the things you're known for, right? Yeah. And do you normally have a daily painting practice? I know I was asking you earlier if you paint. Pretty much, yeah. And how long have you been painting? Oh, since I was probably three. Yeah. <laughs> and professionally, how long have you been painting? Oh, for about maybe, well, the last 10 years I've really for focused sure. on it. Yeah, yeah. and you you're know. also uh, repped by Lila Rogers, which you guys may know because she just right. did her daily challenge. Yes which is awesome. So yeah. your paintings appear on all kinds of stuff, like what mm -hmm. kinds of things? Um, I've done fabric, I've done books, um, illustrated a series of books. First got one cards. Out. Yeah, cards. Gift uh, wrap. Gift wrap, yeah. Pa chocolate packaging, did Cho I see that recently? Chocolate packaging. Do you give yeah. free samples? <laughs> I'm hoping to one day. <laughs> well, your work is so beautiful oh. and um, you use a combination of gouache and watercolor. Mm -hmm. For people, I know a lot of our artists use both of those, and maybe for people who have never heard of gouache, I know nobody can ever spell it. Um, could you just describe what gouache is? I think it's um, opaque watercolor. Yeah, yeah so they, they work nicely together. Yes. So you can kind of use them interchangeably. Carolyn and I are going to be doing like a really loose, fun, and floral kind of piece today mm -hmm. together. But I hope maybe Taryn can get this maybe you guys can see you have to look at these spectacular paintings that Carolyn made for the set so we just filled filled her set with flowers and then she brought these incredible paintings so if you get a sneak peek of them in the background here um, those are by Carolyn and so for people who love your work or, or maybe somebody who's brand new mm. how can they find you on Instagram or yeah, on Instagram Carolyn J great perfect yeah. what does the J stand for Jenny is that your middle name? Yes. Oh, I've always wondered because yeah. Gavin is your last name, and I'm like, oh, it's so confusing because it's a yeah, G. Yeah, <laughs> So Carolyn yeah. Jenny. She's Just that note. Allie Stones comments right away. As soon as we went live, Allie Stones commented, I've been following Carolyn on Instagram for a long time. Can't believe she's going to have her own class now. So stoked. Oh my God, thank you, Allie oh, Stone. Thank you. Great comment from Allie Stone is oh. saying that she's been following your work for a long time and is yeah. super excited for your creative book class. Excellent. So are we. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, in fact, you guys can get ready for Carolyn's class because it's going to be launching on January 1st, and I believe we have a VIP offer. Um, if you want to sign up now, check out the other of thousands of classes that we have on our site and get ready for Carolyn's um, launching on the 1st of January. Excellent. Okay, so how do we start? What are we, how are we starting for our loose floral? We're working on um, Arches Cold Press Watercolor Paper. Yeah, right. Uh, round watercolor brush. So we're working with a Skoda. Jen Orkin Lewis uses these two, yes. I think. Yeah. Cool. Um, the bigger, the better, but I've got a medium size four or six. It I've is. got a 10. I stole her yeah. brush, so she's letting me use it. <laughs> And um, I have a palette going here already of blues and greens, colors I use every day, pretty much. So these um, are watercolors. Yeah. And then um, this is a Japanese watercolor set. Yeah, so we're, you can use these interchangeably. Yeah. So um, we're going to start with those and then add uh, ink details with our nib pen at the end. Exciting. Yeah. Okay. So it's very free. It's like there's no rules, really. Just, you know, pick colors that you like. And it's a floral kind of abstract, whatever you like. It's just free and um, no restrictions, really. Just, you know, start painting. Um, <clears throat> I love it. I'm really enjoying um, going more abstract at the moment just because there's no restrictions and no nothing to hold us to anything. You can just kind of go off on a tangent and do whatever, make, mark make marks and play with the paint and play with the colors and it's just very freeing and so, almost meditative i, I love that yeah, yeah watching you paint has been like yeah like watching someone who's just like really in tune with what they're doing mm -hmm. so you always start with the centers is that right well when i'm painting flowers yes and they're usually dark mm, okay um i just get a like once I do the center, then I, I sort of can visualize the flower around it. I see. And then it helps me kind of balance the page. And Maybe I'll do that. I don't yeah. normally start with the center, so oh, maybe I'll okay. start with the center. What do you start with? 
I do, well, it depends on what style I'm painting in, but when yeah. I do my watercolor with nib pen, I usually do these loose flowers with an open center. Ah, okay. That then I come back in with my nib pen. Right. And make them dark. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to try it your way because I think that's fun. It's always nice to like mix it up a little. Oh, definitely. Because you kind of get in a habit, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. And then when you do things in a new way, you kind of, that's how you learn. Mm -hmm. And, um, and just change it up a bit because sometimes everything starts to look the same mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> so there's a trick to let it not all be the same yeah <clears throat> so how do you like if you've let's say i mean especially when you're a working artist who right. illustrates things for a living in yeah. addition to you know whatever else you're working on yeah um how do you like keep yourself interested uh, well, it's hard. I mean, I go through phases where I'm like, oh my goodness, what am I going to, you know, especially if I'm doing a personal piece. Right. What am I going to do today? But, right. You know, it, when you're at that point, like, I just have to kind of break away from it completely. Mm -hmm. um, but just, I don't know, things, sometimes things feed into the next thing. Like, I'm doing florals, abstract, and then I see something else, and then I'll go off in that direction, mm -hmm. or I'll see a beautiful bicycle. Like I just saw one outside and oh, I want to paint that orange bicycle. Oh, you know? so yeah. It's like looking at things around me or going for walks or, um, you know, going on what I've done like the day before will inspire something. And it's, I don't know. It's just so you just a have journey, to start. Really. Yeah. And then <clears throat> that will lead you to nowhere, but no. somewhere. Yeah. But um, I think taking breaks is really good. Oh yeah, ta yeah. Tell me more about that. Like, well, what? Like, I think people feel like everyone's really interested in doing a daily practice. Right. We have our daily challenges, which we love. Yes. And if you you never have painted or you really want to start painting, a daily practice is a great way to start, right? Yeah. But if you're someone who does paint often, yeah. but is feeling burnt out, like, yeah. what does a break look like? Is that? Well, it's either like. Um, you know, going to yo short term, it's like going mm -hmm. to a yoga class or uh, yeah. going for a walk or going to the yeah. gym or, you know, go to a meditation class or something. Um, long, more long term is, is, I think, more beneficial for the creative yeah. process in general. So travel, I think, is excellent. So I try and do as much as possible. And, um, and just like, it just clears your mind and then you can move on to your next you know, creative project or whatever, but I think traveling is one of the best things for me and so therapeutic in terms of... What kind of things do you do when you here. travel? Um, well, I either do nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, you know, then, or I try and paint every day while I'm traveling. You okay. Know? So I love to go to interesting places like India. Ooh, um, that sounds amazing. You know, I went for, yeah, those kinds of trips, very exotic, lot, you know, lots of adventures along the way. Or like a beach holiday, um, you know, where I just don't do very much and just really get a deep relax. And, um, and then, you know, I'll start to paint while I'm there. So mm -hmm. just like finding things on the beach or finding things on my walk, stuff like that. Palm trees, vegetation, the local birds. Oh, yeah. Stuff like that. Just changing your environment is yeah, probably... Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I need more pink. Okay, we have a few questions coming in. Nancy wants to know, did you buy that tray with watercolors already in it? Oh yeah, so Nancy's asking about this palette. Oh, yeah. And um, does it come this way? And the answer is yeah. Yes, it does. It's called Kurataki and it's a Japanese make. And the colors are super intense and bright. And it comes ready like this, ready to use. Next question comes from Pam. Pam is wondering, what is the surface that Carolyn is using for her paint? Right? Oh, yeah. Um, so Pam's asking about yeah. what this is. Yeah, yeah, so can you talk a little bit about that? You use it, this in your own studio, right? I do. It's a tear-off palette. I find it's the handiest thing. I don't have to wash anything at the end of the day. I can just tear it off and throw it away. And it's great for mixing. The colors stay on the page. The paint stays on the page. It's almost like wax paper, but it's yeah. specifically designed to do mm -hmm. this. And it comes in like a sketch pad. Yeah. So it and has like just, a normal cover and stuff. Yeah, and if you're traveling, you can just take it with you. It's it's excellent. Very portable. Oh, yeah, if you're traveling to your exotic country. Yes. For more inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this hot pink color. The opera rose is one oh, of my most one, favorite colors. Me too. 
I can't live without that color. Yeah. Ditto. Do you, when you're painting in your studio, do you yeah. listen to music, podcasts? You need <laughs> silence. What what is like your studio practice like? Um, I generally have I like quiet. Oh. Yeah, but lately, like, depends on what I'm doing. If I'm some, if I'm doing something that is repetitive, mm -hmm. and then I like to listen to music. Mm -hmm. And I have certain, like, those big paintings. I just, I actually moved the because I have a big dining room table, I painted down there, moved all the paints down there, and then just, I was able to just completely focus. And I put on the music, and it was super fun to do. It was That's like awesome. out of my studio, which was, which was nice. Yeah, it's probably different. I and mean, how long yeah. have you been working in like a home studio situation? Oh, a long time. Like yeah. since my daughter was born, uh, so she's 17. <laughs> 17 long time. years, yeah. That's so awesome. And so you also have a company with your husband, right? Um, yeah. EcoJot. And they they make, can you talk a little bit about it oh, actually? Oh, yeah. Well, it's a family business. Mm -hmm. uh, we started um, like 15 years ago or so. And um, so we were much, we were bigger and then we downsized. We had our own um, pr premises and we employed a lot of people, but we downsized and in the last three years. Mm -hmm. And now... <clears throat> it's just the three of us, my brother, my husband, and myself. Oh, your brother works with you too? Yeah. Oh, fun. And, <laughs> and uh, my, I design the covers, and uh, then they run the production side of things. Oh, that <laughs> sounds like the best gig. Yeah. It's, like you get to do the fun. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm just assuming, no, but the designing the sounds like the yeah. fun part. <laughs> yeah, no, it definitely is the fun part. Production, not so much. All right, more questions. Ashley wants to know, beyond painting, do you create patterns or other accessories? So Ashley's asking, does Carolyn do other um, patterns and accessories other than the painting? But I guess you, you do, but through your licensed illustration work. So people put it yeah. on whatever they want, yeah. basically, when yeah. they buy it from yeah. you. Yeah, if they want to buy a design, they go through my agent, mm -hmm. uh, Lilla Rogers, and they do it that way. So I've done fabric, I've done coloring books, I've done... Uh, wrapping paper. Yeah, I love your wrapping like paper. Cards, so pretty. Etc. Yeah. Cards like. Um, have you ever had anything on an umbrella? No, never. Oh, that would be so uh, rad. Love that. Do you hey. imagine? Floral umbrella would yeah. be so yeah. pretty. Oh. What a way to cheer up a rainy day. Right. Amy wants to know what kind of paintbrushes are you using? Uh, oh yeah, so Amy's okay. asking about the paintbrushes, yeah. um, and these are something that you use often, yeah? Yes. Uh, pretty much all I use, it's an Escoda, Escoda is the make, they're spa uh, Spanish brushes and these are a set of travel brushes, they kind of uh, fold in half like that and uh, super handy and these ones come in a 2, a 4 and a 10 you're using. I'm using the big yeah. guy, so let me use the big guy. So, and then I use a Fulbert brush which is a, in, a cross between a round and a pointy brush. So that's the other one that I use. Yeah, Taryn can maybe get a little shot of that. Close-up mm, close up's not working. Sorry, no close-up. Like you can Google Filbert. <laughs> um, what do you do when you have a part that you hate? Like, I hate that flower. Oh, <clears throat> well, just add, <laughs> add a center. Give it a center, a center. and then you might like it a little bit. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Give it a bit of life. Let's see what color is that. <clears throat> These, I do like this. I don't normally use this... Um, Disposable palette, I use, right. usually use like a butcher tray. Yeah. But I do like it for just testing things because yeah. I have the same palette and I can't for the life of me remember which of these colors right. is blue or purple because oh, yeah. they right. all look really yeah. dark. No, it's the handiest thing. There you go. See, yeah. that's much better. A little better? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. I'm I love this to use indigo. colors I haven't used today. So this is a color I haven't, like this cornflower blue. I haven't really used oh, it. Oh, yeah. It's quite nice. That's pretty. Yeah, it's like a mauvey blue. Blues, this is fun. I like yeah. this this meditation. So when you start to add green, or do we add green? Oh, you can add green. I am going to add green. I, I need some of your peachy yeah. color here. Shell pink. There's a lot of greens in the set. Uh, this is an olivey green. It's a really nice color. I haven't been doing a ton of overall florals myself. I mm. like to do little flowers and vases. That's been like my that's oh, like yeah. my go-to thing when yeah. I don't know what I want to paint. Yeah. Flowers well, and vases. Well, I always go to flowers when I don't know what to paint. Yeah. It's like my standard go-to as well. It's surprising, like, really how um, 
loose that shape can be and still be red as a flower. Yeah, exactly. Especially there's, if you put a center in it. There's so many things you can do. Yeah. I think that's a good one. <clears throat> do you have any projects that you're working on? Oh, well, tell me a little bit about the book project you just finished. It's a oh, series, right? Yes, it's a series. I, um, <clears throat> uh, the first one coming out in, I think, January or February is Trees. And um, the next one I've just finished is Bugs. Oh my God, so fun. And then the third one is Plants, which I'm going to start uh, the rough sketches for when I get back. Oh. And the last one is Birds. Yeah. So it's like a four-year four project. That's so exciting. How does it feel to take on a project that you know has that long of a lifetime? Well, it's uh, interesting. I've never done something like that before. And it's the first real series of books that I've done as well. So that was, it's an interesting process mm -hmm. going through that. And did you, are you writing the book or you're doing the illustration? Are you working with a writer? How does that part work? Well, it's actually a series that was introduced uh, 14 years ago. Oh, wow. And they're reissuing it. Yeah. Oh. So, um, so the, the text original, is already there. Yeah. And they've just updated a little bit. So we're working with the original author. And um, so it's a reissue of a series that was, has already been issued. That's so and cool. So, yeah. So it's like totally new and, uh, you know, more up to date in terms of the illustration and the style of it. More contemporary. Um, something that I love that you talked about um, just in watching you paint this week is about contrast, about right. like how this isn't just green, this is green plus yellow. Yeah. Um, can you tell, talk like a little bit about that? Maybe just in whatever you paint next on your page oh, there. Oh, okay. Well, I think contrast for me is one of the biggest things. Um, when I see people doing watercolor, if there's not enough contrast or in any painting um, mm -hmm. situation, if there's not enough contrast in the painting, just has no luster and no life for me. Mm -hmm. But if there's contrast, everything comes alive. There's mm -hmm. got to be a play between, it's like opposites, mm -hmm. black and white. Um, opposites in color works the same. If you have a dark and a light together, then they're, they're singing together mm -hmm. and bouncing off one another. And so the page starts to come alive. If there's no that. contrast, then nothing going on, no magic. No magic. No. You're looking for the magic. I'm looking for the magic all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Uh, yeah. Constant. Constant, really. How do you know when it's done? Or well, when we should go to ink? Oh, well, just, I think you're almost there. <laughs> <laughs> Look how far you got. Oh, my goodness. Mine's like a falling flower oh, situation. Okay. Well, that's excellent. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of like uh, a 1960s like bed sheet yeah well, there's nothing wrong with that yeah no mm. it's fun yours feels very Japanese sometimes the stuff that um, you've been painting this week I'm like yeah. oh that feels very Japanese to me I'm not sure what it is if it's the shape of the flowers oh, maybe, or I don't know I love it I'm just going to paint a little more down there and then I'm going to go to ink so pretty I, I love this rusty one yeah what color is that I'm going to pick that one and do exactly. that exactly that's the color I want some of that Something that um, a lot of our artists have talked about, not even just painters, fabric designers and quilters, and um, basically everyone on our site mm. has mentioned if color comes up, they talk about not using all brights, but putting oh. brights with muted tones and yeah. how that kind of activates the space. And yes. I, I, this piece may not be an example of it, <laughs> but I definitely think that. Like, I love neon yellow next to, like, a muddy ochre. Yeah. And I feel like you definitely use that in your oh, work. Oh, definitely. Yeah. 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 Even within, like, back to that contrast concept, even yeah. within a single leaf, you'll right. use that pop. Yes. Yeah, your, I mean, your work has such luminosity. It's so beautiful. Um. But yes, you're right, that's opposites again, like very muted, very natural, mm -hmm. very earth tones with the neon. It's mm -hmm. unbelievable to So me. good. Yeah. Um, I can't, let me see if I can show some of, we've been using her sketchbook. I'm just gonna show it on C-cam because I think our close-up camera is not working as well. Um, there's a great example of the neon thing. You keep painting, Carolyn, which is here. And this is something we're gonna be doing in the Daily Challenge where Carolyn paints this landscape and then adds these like bright pops of neon in the abstracted version, which is so cool. I'll give you a few little sneak peeks, you guys. Mm -hmm. um, some really amazing 
fruits. Are you dying over this? <laughs> there you go, close to the sea cam. Okay, our next question comes from Phil. Hey, Phil. Hello. Phil's one of our like main guys. Oh, okay. He, he comes to a lot of our um, oh, live shoots. Hi, Phil. Yeah. Phil is wondering, do you always pre-mix your paint on a palette, or was this, like, were you just working on this today? Oh, yeah. Oh, just working on this today. I never really pre-mix anything. You just kind of lay down yeah. your original color. Like, That's right. So you think about what you're going to paint, yes. maybe, like, put down some of your colors, <clears throat> yeah. and then you like mix in the moment yes i mix as i'm going along yeah. and then i add if i think i'm missing something or you know. and you mix on the page a lot like you I allow do. all yeah, of yeah. this to happen uh, definitely well i some i like the wet on wet as well mm -hmm. so i'll do that and then i'll add you know a red or something to that whatever color <clears throat> all right, i'm gonna let mine dry because i want to do some ink also yeah i love um the arches i work on the uh, hot press a lot. I really like hot press paper and I kind of am not a huge fan of the cold press, but I really yeah. like working on this. This is yeah. really nice. Yeah, well, it's got a nice texture too. Yeah. Without being too rough, like yeah. handmade paper. Yeah, it's yeah. really nice. Um, and it comes on a block, which is really great, great too, because then it doesn't buckle. This is so fun. We should do this all week. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. So you work in your sketchbook also, um, like the one I was showing you guys earlier, and that's that's an EcoJot sketchbook, right? It's a yeah. Carolyn Gavin one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, these pages are great because they will take wet media, but then you can draw on it. You can use ink, but they're not super thick like a normal watercolor page. No. It's, yeah. Um, it's textured, but not very textured. But it's thick enough to take a lot of heavy, heavy, uh, heavy watercolor and water. So cool. Yeah. So cool. It's amazing paper. I just love that paper. It's so great. Look at this, you guys. Okay, next question is what is the difference between cold press and hot press? Ah. So the uh, question is what is the difference between cold press paper and hot press paper? Right. Uh, for me, and I don't, I'm not an expert, but <laughs> uh, cold press is textured yep. and hot press is smooth. Yeah, so if you think about a shirt yeah. that's been ironed, a shirt that's unironed has texture, that's cold, right? You can go under an iron. But if it's been ironed hot pressed, you iron out all the wrinkles. So it's kind of like a loose concept. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a smoother one. Um, we don't have the close up camera, but there's a bit of tooth on a cold pressed paper. And you can even get rough, which is a cold press with extra texture. That's right. Which yeah. I'm definitely not a fan <laughs> of. But I made a lot of faces. I think that's part of the reason I don't love the textured right. paper. Mm. Um, but for florals, it looks amazing. Yeah. I know Yao Chang, I think, uses a cold press mm. also. Mm -hmm. She's one of our other okay. next, flower painters. Yeah. Next question follows up on that. Pam wants to know, why would I use hot versus cold? So Pam's asking, what's the advantage of using hot versus cold? I guess it's preference, right? Preference, yeah. I like a bit of texture in my paper. Um, I, I don't like using a very smooth paper, and the sketchbook provides that in between. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so that's nice. Mm -hmm. And like different projects might call for different things. That's right, yeah. yeah. Depends on what I'm doing. If I'm doing something loose like this, this kind of paper is wonderful. It's great. Yeah. And it takes the color so well. I feel like yeah. you don't realize until you use a bad paper yeah. that like it can really absorb the color of your yeah. watercolor. Things mm -hmm. can look really faded and yeah. this just behaves really yeah. nicely. There's no point for me in using a bad yeah. cheap paper. It just right. doesn't work. Right, right. Even if I'm doing something really rough, I'd rather use a better paper. Yeah, yeah. That's like something Cleo talked about on Tuesday on our live shoot, like, <coughs> okay. like invest yeah. in the materials, like, because yeah. you get conflicting advice. Sometimes you're like, doesn't matter, just do it. Mm. And then it's like, no, but use the right tool mm. for the job. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, no, I think the best brushes, the best you can afford is worth it. For yeah. For sure, your, your work will improve, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So ink. Yeah, so ink, ink time. Now. Yeah. So we're using uh, Dr. Martin's Black Star Matte Waterproof India ink, and we're using a nib pen for this. And we're both going to share that little guy. Okay. You go, you start. All right. This is a lovely pen that Courtney picked up for me. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I really like it. So just a nib pen. It's, I think we got it on Amazon, to be yeah, honest. It's uh, really reliable. Like Sometimes you use them, and they get stuck, and they get clogged, and you might find that with that one. But, this one's um, an E&M. Yeah, this one is really nice. I love Courtney, it. can you say the, ink, uh, the name of the ink again? Sure. And the name of the brushes. 
Yes, uh, the brushes that Carolyn's using and we're using today are Escoda. They're made in Spain. I think they're hand assembled, so they're like a high-end brush. We're using a round brush, which is great for watercolor. That comes to a pointed tip. And Carolyn's been working with a two, a four, and a size 10 brush. And then right now we're gonna start using some ink. We're using that with a nib pen and we're using Dr. P.H. Martin's Black Star Matte, which is an India ink, it's waterproof. And you're not waiting for everything to be totally dry. You're just going for it. No, because I like the haphazard effect of when the ink meets the wet paint yeah. underneath. And it's something that kind of just happens organically on the page. Yeah, it's I'm really fun. control it and I love that, yeah. That pen working okay? Oh yeah, it's fine. Oh good. I'll make do. I love an off register look. This is like one of my most favorite ways to work. Yeah, me too. I don't know if you guys can hear it from our mics, but the these pens really make a noise on the paper, which is really fun. And you might have worked with these. I did use these in my monoprinting class. Maybelle uses them in her calligraphy class. Um, I don't know if Jen Orkin used any in her class. Pam Garrison might have used them. So this is definitely not the first time they've appeared on a Creative Bug set. So hopefully you guys have seen these before. And you always work with the black ink, right? Pretty much. Yeah. I have used um, the colorful Dr. Martens. Mm -hmm. I love those too, but I don't use them as often lately. And I'm looking to use some <clears throat> walnut and more natural inks as well. Oh. So that's another thing I'd like to explore that's coming cool. up. Yeah. Michelle wants to know, can we re reuse re-inker inks? Can we re-ink inks? Yes, you can. If they're on a palette like that, you can. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was Michelle's question. I yeah. didn't understand, but you got it. Ooh, I keep flipping little bits of black everywhere, but you're okay with that, right? <laughs> I love it when that happens. Sometimes I turn it into something. Yeah, we should make mm -hmm. little bugs. Mm -hmm. That's another thing that you've been painting this week, which has been yeah. so fun. Little bugs. Yeah, I think, I don't know if this also is part of Michelle's question, but... Um, like we did a day where Carolyn drew faces and instead of using the nib pen, you use two Pentel, mark, like a traditional kind of flowing ink pen, yeah. a Salachi and a Finito. Yeah. So if you're not used to using a nib pen or you can't run out and get one, you can use a black, yeah. like a black yeah. marker. And those are super handy if you're traveling as well. Yeah. You don't want to <laughs> yeah. carry, like run into trouble with inks and pens and things. Totally. Oh yeah. my God, I'm trying to figure out when I'm taking on vacation art supply oh, wise. And that's it's always a dilemma. I know, I'm yeah. like, but I'm going to want to buy a bunch of yeah. art supplies. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> what can I yeah. bring and what I'm going to buy? Well, you must take a sketchbook. Oh my yeah. gosh, that's, that's like yes. a given. Yeah. yeah. Do you, well, you have your sketchbook that you love. Yeah. Yeah. yeah always, mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I always bring that sketchbook with me anywhere wherever I go. Yeah. Next question comes from Ashley, and Ashley wants to know, Carolyn, what mm. do you think about metallic and muted colors versus mm. bright colors? Oh, well, I like metallic, so I don't often use them, but there is a gold and a copper and a silver in this set here in the Kurataki, so I'm going to, I think, experiment with those. Um, muted, I love to, I don't really use a lot of muted colors, but I find I do use them when I want my colors to pop off the page because mm. the contrast is really good. So I do use them sometimes depending on what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So yes to both. So yes to both. Yeah. Yeah, metallics are really popular right now. I feel like. Right. I mm -hmm. see a lot well, more I might of them. i just use some now, in fact. Let me try them out. Oh, more black. I'm just throwing the black everywhere. I love the way you've got like big splodges of black. <laughs> yeah, a mm. lot of those. I'm going to try out these as we speak. Yeah. And this so, is a gold. And see, they don't really stand out very much, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think huh? their metallics no, are that strong. Not great, but not bad. But they might look good on black paper. Yeah, exactly. Or white like this. Yeah, you can see them a little trying. better. Yeah. So the next comment, not a question, but comment I want to share comes from Catherine. Catherine says, "I love Creative Bug. Great yeah. teachers, great investment." Oh, 
Thank Aww. you. Um, <laughs> remind me of her name? Catherine? Catherine. Catherine. Thanks, Catherine, for saying such nice things. Um, and thank you for being here on our live shoot. Catherine is saying she loves Creative Bug. Great investment. Excellent teachers. Carolyn is a testament to that. Um, yeah, you guys, I'm so excited for her class launch, launching January 1st. And Allie, do we have a we have the VIP offer that you we did a link to? Posted. So it's 50% off a Creative Bug membership for life. <gasps> wow. Oh my gosh, that's such an awesome for offer. This is a lifetime subscription and you get a 50% off with the VIP access. So Allie posted a link. I'm going to draw right over this flower because I don't like it. <laughs> um, and you can get access now. We have thousands of classes, lots of stuff on watercolor, and then you'll be prime and ready to go for when Carolyn's class launches on January 1st. Mm -hmm. So I, br I just scribble everything when I get to my ink layer, <laughs> <laughs> which I like. Loose. Yeah. Okay, next question comes from Diane. And Diane wants questions. to know which paper block are you? Diane's asking, what yeah. are we using for paper? Yeah, it's the Arches Cold Press Aquarelle Watercolor Paper. It has a green cover. That'll help you because they come in colors. Yeah. And the size is 9 by 12, which yeah. is the standard size pretty much that I use most of the time. Is that your favorite size? I like that size. Yeah. It's not too small Yeah. and it's not too big. They do come bigger, but I find that a little bit daunting when I've got a huge piece of white what? paper in front of me. I bet Pam Garrison would love to do this too. She does a lot of responsive drawing to her painting stuff. She's on our site also. Okay. And she loves flowers. Mm. I feel like we have a lot of kindred flower people on right. Creative Bug. <laughs> oh my God, I love this. Well, this has been so much oh, fun. So much fun. Oh my God, let's look at these guys. It's so beautiful. Mm. I love that. Mm -hmm. Those are awesome. Mm. I love the wet on wet. You get a really lovely effect. Yeah, super mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. We have a couple more questions. Sounds like we have a lot of questions. <laughs> you coming in. Bill wants to know, Carolyn, do you yes. use other mediums in your work apart from ink? This piece would really suit some cotton thread or freehand embroidery. Mm. Oh, mm -hmm. Bill's full of suggestions. Yes, um, I do use uh, gouache, acrylic gouache. And what else do I use? That's pretty much it. Colored pencils sometimes. Colored pencils I've started using, yeah. But embroidery definitely would be beautiful. You can take this piece and embroider it would be, I can see it, it would be lovely. I think that's not as immediate as painting. No. <laughs> Which but is, an it's hard. The artist could just take this and yeah. make something beautiful out of it. I know, it sounds like that's what yeah. Phil would do. Mm -hmm. Watch and Rebecca's class. The next question class. is, what kind of sketchbook did you reference? Oh yeah. Oh. So this is Carolyn's sketchbook through EcoJot, right? Yes. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, under my name, and it comes in two sizes, this portrait size and then a lovely square one, which I use as well. So I've got a couple of sketches always going at the same, sketchbooks going at the same time, yeah. It's nice, it has like a nice weight to it, like really lovely black kind of canvas yeah. cover. <clears throat> awesome. So yeah, Is it, uh, do we have any other questions? Thanks everyone for joining us. Carolyn, thank you oh, so much for being you. here this oh, week. It's been so, so much. awesome. It's been amazing. Yeah. We can't wait for your class. So coming oh. out January 1st, yeah. Daily Challenge. Um, you can find Carolyn's work between now and then on Instagram at Carolyn J, which we found out is for Jenny. Yes. It's the insider <laughs> scoop here at Creative Fun. Right. My secret's out. Yeah, right? <laughs> um, and we'll be coming back at you live like we always do on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So we'll see you next week on Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, I love that.